Now, suspended ANC Secretary General S. Mahashule is back in court tomorrow for his corruption trial. He's facing charges of fraud and corruption, which are related to the multi-million Free State Asbestos project. Mahashule continues to maintain his innocence, obviously. And my colleague, Masa Khorakhlaka, is currently sitting with the man himself. Uh, let's head over to the Free State now, where she's about to delve into the various details of this particular case, Masa uh, I've mentioned in my intro uh, that he maintains his innocence throughout all of the developments that have happened over the last few months. What does he say to this morning to you? Well, Rafia, we are broadcasting from the Free State here in Bloemfontein. We're joined by the ANC Secretary General. As you know, Rafia, it's not only an important year for the Secretary General. He's heading into um, one of those important weeks with that asbestos uh, pretrial that you just mentioned. But also it's an important year for the African National Congress. They're going into their 55th uh, elective conference in December to choose their new leaders. So this is going to be very important. And, of course, because the SG is suspended, he is part of of the top six so it'll be very interesting to hear what he thinks um, and of course uh, other details about other things. Um, SG thank you very much for um, joining us uh, on Newslink we appreciate your time. Um, I realize you've been going to church Hangataman this week you've been going to church quite frequently do you frequent church as much as you have? Well, I'm a church goer. Mm. Uh, I grew up in a Christian family uh, I'm a Methodist I go to all churches. I don't go to churches when it's election year okay. or when one is in, have problems. Uh, I do go to churches, not just my church, uh, even those indigenous churches, uh, because uh, I come, I'm an African. Uh, I was born in, in, a, in, a, in a house where there were Christians. Mm. My parents, my grand grandparents, uh, yeah. So what, 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 you've been going quite a lot this week. It's, it was Thursday, I think, Shembe, and another church, I believe, on Friday in Dumahole, uh, where you grew up. Are you, are you praying for something specific? I always pray, uh, and I pray for, you know, when you pray, you pray for leaders, uh, you pray for the poor. Uh, in my church, they always think about those who don't have food, those who don't have clothes. We always pray for them, uh, but it's not just prayer. It's what we do. Mm. Uh, and, and, and well, I've read, I've read a lot of uh, Marxism and Leninism. Uh, so I'm able to understand both world of uh, those who don't believe and, uh, and, and those who believe. Mm. I, I believe, I respect them as a secular South Africa which believes in all religions, we respect them. Mm. And we give people space, uh, whether they are Muslims or Christians or non-Christians, uh, Jews and Gentiles. <coughs> <laughs> Wonderful. All right, Esti, let's bring it back. Uh, I thought maybe you're praying for the fact that your pre-trial continues tomorrow. Um, are you ready for what's expected in court tomorrow or whatever could happen? Well, ministers organized the church, the prayer service. They invited me, and I was happy when they went to, to my town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I'm ready for the court. Uh, I saw the headline saying Mahashule is delaying. Uh, this is what they pump all the time before the case uh, starts. Uh, uh, we have been asking uh, NPA, uh, the prosecution, uh, because remember, by law, we are entitled to information. I'm charged, I'm charged with what? Uh, are there witnesses? Who are the witnesses? Uh, last time they said uh, Cholota is a witness. Uh, I said, well, uh, it's fine, good. Um, uh, Cholota has worked with me. Maybe she knows something which I don't know. And later on, and they lied. It, it, was, it was a lie. So tomorrow we appealed, uh, we, we, we put, and we did it not only yesterday. When the case was postponed to 21, 22, it was for a reason because we were actually going to put papers to say there is no case. Uh, I'm charged number 13, accused number 13, is deliberate. So that they pull and pull, uh, they, are they are wasting time uh, because they have no information. This is a political trial. Mm. and will prove with time that it's a political trial. And that's why I want to be in the box. I want to be there so that uh, South Africans know the truth, that I've, I've, I've been in Parliament for 25 years and I could not do anything wrong. Suddenly, last years of my term, I do something wrong, which is corruption, mm. when we have fought. Uh, and I still 
support the ANC resolution in terms of uh, fighting corruption and crime. Mm. Uh, well, you know, uh, I'm going to come back to <clears throat> the fact that you believe that there's some delays in this, in this uh, particular case and that you believe that it's political and, of course, other issues that you've just mentioned now. But what's the way forward? What have you instructed your legal team? Because of how long this case is, uh, has been dragging on, it was supposed to uh, have been a pretrial in August. We're now in February of 2022. Um, are you probably instructing your, your legal team to ask the court to... Um, remove the charges against you? Yeah, there are no charges. Yeah. In the media, the, the story is 70 charges against Bakashul. I ask, what is, just tell me what about one charge against me. People will say corruption. Then I say, what? What corruption? If you say 70 charges, uh, can you read the 70 charges so that the public knows about the 70 charges? Because the, the indictment is there. It's, it's a public a document. There's, there are no charges against me. Mm. Uh, first, they said they are charging me with oversight. And I said, well, charge MECs, charge HODs. But by law, accounting officers are HODs. Charge the president uh, because uh, some of the decisions we are implementing were from national uh, uh, presidency. Some were from ministers as they were doing things in the province. Uh, some were from uh, us here as uh, MECs and premiers. And uh, I can assure you, in my life, I've never been involved in corruption. But well, the national it's for me and it's for the, the police and the NPA to prove their case. I'm still saying this is genuinely a political trial. We'll see. And, and I, I'm definitely confident. Uh, and I'm sure, I hope, uh, because I hear judges are being used, judges are being bought, uh, but they say some and all that. I want to come to that we'll because you're, you're saying that you, 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 you have no corruption, uh, you don't believe that you did anything wrong, that there are no charges. But clearly the National Prosecuting Authority, with the NDPP saying they are prospects to prosecute, they believe that they have evidence against you. So if you say this is political, a political trial, what do you mean? What, what, what are your thoughts about the judiciary? You think they are being handled? Let's, 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 let's say that when we are in court because uh, I hope uh, televisions will be there to inform uh, the entire South Africa and the world. And, and we'll then talk there and what we believe. And uh, we will, you know, the fact that they went to many people trying to force them, they even prepared statements for some people uh, to implicate me. And they said to them, uh, Norman, it's, it's not that we want you. So there are affidavits, uh, which uh, even the investigators of uh, Zondo were trying to make uh, the same Morwadi Cholota to sign, uh, and others. Uh, and, and maybe it is, it is proper to, to say, let's, let's, let's talk these things in a court of law, so that the public can actually know. Mm. Maybe we'll be able even to call some of them as witnesses. Mm. So the, 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 the fact that you're saying it's a political trial, you believe that there are those within the ANC who are against you, you still believe that you're being singled out? Indeed. Who are these people? Give us names. Let's, 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 let's talk in, in a court of law. So you will give us the names I once will. the trial? You will? I will. Okay. Um, issue, we, we did uh, try and crisscross uh, the... I, even remember the top six of the ANC mm. said this trial is flimsy. These are flimsy charges. And the entire uh, top six supported me. Mm. And uh, we agreed that uh, they, they even wanted to come to the case. But uh, I think the national chair reminded us as top six of uh, a decision which was taken that uh, it will seem like the ANC itself is not serious about, about not respecting uh, the rule of law and all that. And I also advise that uh, I think the national chair is fine. But in terms of the support, in terms of saying, it's on record, I have record. Uh, I'm not talking about something, uh, and, and if the court allows, uh, we'll play such records in court. All right, so we'll look forward to that. In the meantime, um, SG, we did try and crisscross parts of the Free State, which uh, a lot of the times have, has been uh, described as your, as your stronghold within the ANC, to try and see, of course, you know, SG, there are people who like you and there are people who think that you're corrupt and they don't like you. So we crisscrossed the province to try and figure out, uh, to speak to ordinary citizens of the Free State and politicians as well. 
um, to have them talk about what they think about you. We have it here. The viewers will also see it uh, on screen. And I just want to play it for you. Um, I'm hoping you can see it. Uh, while you watch very quickly, the viewers will also see it. We began our trip at a school in Bloemfontein. We began our trip at a school in Bloemfontein where farm children attend classes. Most, like Lebochang Binar, would walk at least 40 kilometers a day just to get an education. The school dropout rate was high and the pass rate low. Until, they say, Ace Mahashuli arrived and a hostel was built on the school grounds for farm learners. Now the school contributes to the Free State's number one position for metric results. I was going to have 20 kilos. So I was going to have to And then I was going to have to go to the school. I was going to have to go to the school. I was going to have to go to the school. I was going to have to go to the school. I was going to have to go to the school. I was going to have to go to the school. I was going to have to go to the school. I was going to have to go to the school. I was going to have to go to the school. I was going to have to go the grade 12 pupil says even finances at home improved after her mother was employed at the school. Teaching staff say the project improved many lives. Since we have been in a hostel, uh, the most important thing is now there is no more traveling long distance. Because most of our learners are, are staying plus minus 30 to 90 kilometers. So they were coming, they were coming every day, always late, and they arrive at home late also. And then since the hostel, the results are good. Learners are accommodated in the hostel. They feel like they enjoy the school like other uh, learners. We then moved to another area in Bloemfontein where military veterans would have good memories with Mahashule, like Moses Nyapele, who now has a business growing fruits and vegetables in the home handed over to him by the Mahashule administration. Cut the ring of Bo, Bo, Tabo Manyoni. But as he repairs some shoes as a side job, he tells us his alliance is with the ANC and not an individual. He says even with some of the good things Mahashule has done, if he does wrong, he must be dealt with. The party is not the feeling is sharp. The problem is only the individuals, the power mongers. Uh, this thing, they must just sort it out. Yeah, they must just sort it out. Then judgment will be there. No, I'm not there. Mm. If someone is wrong, it's wrong. Not so far from here, in an area called Bato, Families were removed from dilapidated houses and new ones were built for them. But about an hour's drive away in Dark City, residents feel abandoned. They are still living under asbestos roofing, which was supposed to be removed during a multi-million rand project, which the suspended ANC Secretary General is now facing charges in court for. This woman, who is HIV positive, says she also has TB and a lung infection that she believes was caused by the roofing. She says her entire family, from her parents to one of her sisters, died from TB or some sort of lung infection. <laughs> I 
Others who have also laid their loved ones to rest from TB blame it on the asbestos roofing. He has uh, attended a few medical uh, uh, doctors who diagnosed him with uh, severe TB. They found that it was uh, asbestosis. I think that's what they call it, yeah. The man says when he thinks of Ace Mahashule, he becomes emotional. Angry. Angry to lose lives of our loved ones be simply because somebody who was given the responsibility to remove this asbestos ended up not using that money for that purpose. A professor we spoke to says asbestos doesn't cause TB but can be extremely dangerous to people's health. He says although asbestos is a health hazard and needs to never be used again, the solution would be to move people in areas like Dark City to completely new houses. Asbestos is a health hazard. It's not being used anywhere in the world at the moment, um, particularly in its fibrous form, uh, less so in the form where it's been compacted and turned into a device, for example, a heater or a roof, etc. But of course, those heaters and uh, roofs can also start to break down and the fibers can be released into the atmosphere. The trouble is that if you do have already an asbestos roof, then ripping it down is actually more dangerous than leaving it where it is. It would be far better if those people could be moved to other houses. Driving to a remote area called Cornelia on the other side of the province, we meet women who say they were assisted in getting chickens to farm by the Provincial Agriculture Department under the leadership of Mahashule. They say although challenges were there, with some of the chickens dying, for instance, the years they've worked since being handed over the vegetable-turned-poultry farm and the work they've put in is starting to pay off. And their children beam with pride to have working mothers. But of course, many South Africans have heard and know of the Estina dairy farm about an hour away, the almost 300 million rand project that was supposed to uplift the lives of black farmers from a town called Frieda. It took us a while before we managed to convince one of the beneficiaries to talk to us. They're all afraid for their lives, saying people have been killed before for talking or exposing information about the failed project. And even with the project being handed back to them, they say they still don't trust anyone. Politically, there are mixed feelings among comrades as well, with divisions about Mahashule within party ranks. Some have described him as a lovely person who is being targeted, like this former mayor in Valkom. What worries me, how many people have been alleging the ends with corruption? Not only Comrade Ace, there are so many. In the whole that NEC, if I can mention they've been alleged of this and been alleged of this corruption, this one have done this, you know even yourselves. We, we, we can't leave all the bad things up. These are good things that Ace have done while others call him an embarrassment. The process of rebuilding the ANC and rebuilding the structures of the ANC wants everybody who's prepared to, to work for that unity 
not people who will be paying lip services and doing things that are uh, counter the same thing that they will be claiming. And in this case, I must say, if uh, the Secretary General of the ANC respects the position that he's holding and understands how the ANC functions, he will, he will disease from uh, doing all that he's doing and uh, saying what he's been saying all over the media whenever he gets an opportunity and demonstrating that he is working against the current leadership and that is not how a leader should behave. And uh, we are disappointed, of course, as the province that uh, he comes from our province. The suspended SG has publicly threatened some in the party, saying if he takes the stand in his asbestos trial, the ANC would likely collapse. Masako Rathlacha in the Free State. <coughs> so, SG, let's start with um, what you said, what, what, what I said there in the end. You've said in public before that you're willing to take the stand, you want to clear your name, but uh, you, are, you, you do uh, threaten that this will collapse the ANC. At some point you actually said it could collapse the ANC if you were to expose some of uh, the dirty laundry within that. It's, it's something that uh, the former president, Jacob Zuma, also used to say at some point, that if he needs to take a stand in some of the trials against him, uh, the ANC would see itself in far more trouble. Um, so are you going to take the stand or are you going to keep quiet like the former president because you love the ANC? Well, it's, it depends how you, you have uh, been nurtured in the African National Congress. The foreign tendencies which I see post-apartheid in a democratic South Africa, uh, if you are a member of the party, never mind the flaws in that party, never mind issues, they are confidential things. <clears throat> I'm sure every party has its own confidential things. Uh, um, there is that clip which uh, one of the members of parliament has actually uh, said uh, maybe the president must respond as to whether he said this and that. Um, if we shall have to be called uh, uh, to say is this clip the real clip or not, uh, I wouldn't uh, talk about what happened within the internal structures of the ANC. But if it's out and everybody says uh, uh, we should talk, uh, I mean, if you call me to, to give evidence, I'll just say the, the meeting of the African National Congress, uh, if it was, it was on Zoom, is recorded. So just release the Zoom document as is, verbatim, then you'll understand. Uh, so I can't stay, take a stance and get into the box and talk about the dirty linen of the African National Congress. Uh, it's, it's, it's completely, uh, it might be seen to be something right uh, uh, in the eyes, but I'm a party loyalist and I do respect the, the South African laws, I do respect the, the people of South Africa, but I belong to a party which has set in uh, a way of, uh, of, of doing things and, and that's how I've been uh, groomed and nurtured within the African National Congress. I understand it 100% completely, uh, the ANC. And, and maybe those who, who later joined the ANC, those who once were favorites of a uh, uh, loyalist of Jacob Zuma, a uh, loyalist of Mahashule and all that, uh, when they couldn't get what they wanted to do, uh, they blame me for everything, uh, and I'm, I'm not perturbed because I'm focused, I'm waking, I'm doing what is right. And, and when the people of South Africa and the people in my area, the people in the province are happy, I'm not worried about comrades who were leaders. Remember, some of the comrades you are interviewing here, like the Honorable Sikhupi Malib, was an MEC, uh, I think twice. Uh, he was in Parliament. Uh, and uh, he, he can tell us what they have done uh, during their term. Uh, why couldn't they remove the asbestos? Why couldn't they do this and that? Uh, he was one of the leaders in the Southern uh, Free State. Uh, and, and I know <clears throat> even uh, when he applied for boards, he cited my name as a reference. And uh, I was phoned a million times, uh, do you know Sikhupi Malay who has applied for this board? Uh, Today I'm this bad element, uh, but that is such is life. Uh, mm. 
uh, those who worked with uh, with time tense mm. everybody in this province uh, loved jacob zuma and everybody when zuma was in in a uh, president everybody uh, went to jacob zuma everybody 207 this province pronounced uh, in, in Polukwane, it was not Mahashule. All of these leaders were there, and they pronounced Jacob Zuma. Uh, some of them have just been surviving because uh, when it is this person, president, when it is this premier, when it is, the, they change with times. No, I remain principal, and I don't support individuals. I support what, uh, what uh, people say and what the ANC have actually taught us. Mm -hmm. And I respect, and that's why wholeheartedly I will never wave from the resolutions of the National Conference of the ANC over time. I will never waver from what our people have fought for, the Freedom Charter. And if you look, in, if I have to summarize this, if you look at the, that video, um, it was the election manifesto of the ANC in 2009 and 2014 which prioritize education and health and rural development and township development, job creation, job creation as, uh, as part of what we are supposed to do. Mm. And uh, basic President uh, Zumas and the ANC said education priority number one. So what we prioritized was to ensure that all the schools, farm schools, kids were moving up and down. We build them a hostel accommodation, not only in Bloemfontein, is there in Kharib, those in the eastern part of the Free State in Kwagwa. Mm. Makabelani, I think it's, a, it's an old school, we tend it. Uh, there is a, a farm where there were 43 farm workers and houses. We turned that into a new farm school, uh, the Abdalawa, mm. working with uh, the then Minister uh, uh, of Rural Development, Google and Quinty. Mm. We, we came with uh, something, a farm where there were 43 people with nothing. We built houses, we built roads, we built a boarding school, let, let me, let me, everything. Let me just come in there, SG. So uh, basically with those, I know that, uh, you know, uh, you had the Riasasela in the Free State during your tenure as Premier, and education was your top priority, I saw in the documents. Um, now... It was the you, ANC top priority. Yes. yes. So um, you, 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 you are saying that you did have a hand in the successes of some of the stories that we put in here. As a collective, as a collective, led by Mahashule, led by Mahashule, a collective, the African National Congress, mm. because we'll work with the councillors from the mayor and councillors, we'll work with district mayors, and I'll work with my MECs, uh, very competent comrades, uh, who were actually, uh, especially the MEC of Education. We come from the same township. Uh, we we started career guidance in our town, and the man loves uh, science and maths. Mm. And uh, we came together. Whenever we discuss education, we won't leave it to the department. We're discussing it. Item one, uh, Executive Council of the Free State, let's discuss education. After that, we'll call mayors to make input. After that, we'll call principals. We'll go to Professor Johnson, uh, who was the vice chancellor of the university. Of, uh, we'll go to Professor Mtembu. Mm. And then and once we have done that, we look what uh, SONA has said, uh, what we have said in the Freedom Charter. And uh, what uh, vision 2030? Mm. People forget that uh, it was during Zuma's time, from Mandela, President Mandela, President Mbeki. There was no long-term planning. Mm. When President Zuma came in 2009, vision 2030, what you call NDP, became our guiding document mm. for the next 30 years until 2030. All right, let's what a wonderful thing which President Zuma has done, mm. including uh, the issue of free education. Mm. So you're saying that. Uh, collectively the successes and uh, there was oversight from you with those projects as, as, as premier, former premier of the ANC um, in the free state uh, particularly. So, you know, you see how it looks to South Africans, right, that uh, uh, with the projects that do have success, you want to take part of the credit as former premier to the successes of those projects. But as soon as there are bad things said about your Freda and asbestos, there is no I was there, I, uh, I, I didn't play oversight, etc. Can I, you see how it looks? No, I've never played oversight. I so, was part of people who were agitating MECs to do this. I went with them. The Free Aid Project was one of the best projects. That project, when it started, it was the MEC Agriculture, Msebenzi Zwani, and the MEC Finance, uh, Seiso Mohai. 
together with the HODs who brought a document. And that document, they call it Muhoma Mobu. That's how the project started. And they then started talking about the free red dairy. I can tell you it was one of the best projects. And I've never disassociated myself away from that. In the first place, I said one of the big things, that project was going to compete with Nestle, uh, the milk company in, in Harrismith. And that's why a, a lot of noise started. Uh, because even when National Treasury gave us uh, the report about that uh, project, National Treasury said it, it, it has not yet finalized all the other things. Uh, it was under investigation. I went there uh, once the public protector uh, raised an alarm, once the DA raised an alarm. I don't run departments. I've never managed run departments because MECs and HODs very competent. Uh, some people say we always uh, deploy and appoint. Uh, if you go to the MECs and the HODs who we employed, highly qualified. As the Freedom Charter said, we appointed them on merit. Very, very competent, practical experience, uh, academically qualified, understand the ANC. Because when the ANC is in government, you have to have people even if they are general uh, public who understand the policies of the African National Congress. It's, 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 it's happening all over the world. Mm. The DA wants people who will push and implement DA policies mm. and resolutions. Uh, any party uh, will actually want to do that. Mm. So I have never disassociated myself from, from uh, uh, Friede. I have never said I don't play oversight. I have said I am not responsible for things which happen in a particular department. But when things are raised, I am the first to jump and say, uh, well, let's also investigate. Was it matter. raised? Uh, was it not raised with you that uh, there seems to be an issue with uh, Freda? The investigations, uh, did they not come to you to say, Premier, it looks like there's a problem here, let's halt? There was never said that let's halt. Uh, if you, you, you must look at the reports, even the reports of uh, the then uh, public protector, mm. you'll understand it, that we were actually being led by such reports. When these things were, were actually raised, I also then called the MEC to say, but what is happening in this uh, project? Uh, why are people raising this? Uh, you said they are, they, they are going to be beneficiaries who come from local in that, uh, in that area of Pumelela. What is happening? And the MEC assured me. Uh, that uh, the project is still, and, and we all went there as the executive. So the executive was still happy about that project uh, of, of, of free the dairy. Um, I, I can tell you there is nothing wrong. And I hear people talking about free the dairy. If you go to race, there is a project which was supported by the same Department of Agriculture, uh, the IDC at National, provincial government and national government, even President Zuma opened that uh, because it's white owned uh, and we put a lot of resources. It's white owned and the workers are actually going to benefit. We went to that factory. I don't know the details. I went to the factory when the factory was being opened, when it was launched, and I was happy that uh, the local people around this, the workers are going to benefit. Uh, I did not worry about uh, it being a white company, uh, but they gave some stake to those employees. And nobody talks about uh, it because is it, is it because it's white? Nobody talks about 800 million, uh, which uh, has built uh, some of the schools in the free state through Shanduka. Uh, I hear Shanduka always say we have put a rent for rent. That is not that is not uh, factual, and and there was no tender. 800 million, you're talking 300, 300, whatever, 200, whatever millions. Uh, uh, and it's, it's, it's the department. I never said uh, don't go, uh, you should not go out on tender for Shandoga to build schools. Uh, I did not worry about I actually found the situation that way. And it's only in 2016 when the Auditor General, over all those years, only in 2016, when the Auditor General says uh, irregular, ex fruitless expenditure uh, uh, in, in terms of Shandoka and the MEC's, uh, MEC finance, I know, was actually uh, told to, 
to condone that project quick, quick. Uh, fortunately, she, 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 she refused. Just for reference, for was, the it was, it was, it was going to be. Uh, criminal. Mm. So just for reference in terms of uh, the viewers who are watching, some of whom might not, might, may not know, Shanduka, uh, company owned by the president. Yeah. Are you saying there were irregular, um, you know, I know there's evidence from the AG, and what are you thinking in terms of that? What should happen there? Is this why you feel that you're singled out? Because there, are, there is evidence against other leaders in the ANC, but you're the one that's been told to step aside? I have not done anything wrong. The ANC top six believe that uh, there's nobody who can be charged with oversight. It's on record. I have the record. The, the, the official says these are flimsy charges. Uh, and, and, and I said, well, I hope nobody has a... Uh, because nowadays, if somebody complains about you, uh, South Africa has not been run by the ANC. It's not been run by politicians. Uh, a constable can charge you. A judge, a magistrate can sentence you for things which people have just picked up on the street. Mm. I, I want to assure South Africans, and I want to be in that box, and I want MPA to prove that I was involved in corruption. Mm. This asbestos story, I did not know anything until it was raised by the DA, and I went to the department, and I said, uh, Mr. Mukhesi, the HOD, what is happening here? And they said, no. We had a feasibility study. Mm. Um, we had a feasibility study, mm. and we applied the Section 32 from Gaute. Mm. Gaute has spent not not uh, uh, one 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 uh, 400 million five doing the study in terms of asbestos. Northern Cape have done the same. Mm. They have not removed asbestos. The documents from MPA to my lawyers says uh, it was going to be about the study. Uh, uh, I have never met Saudi until I met Saudi when I was charged with Let, him. Let's park the that. man I who gave to... me, mm. allegedly gave me 10 million, yeah. according yeah. to the gangster book, mm. what lies. Let's park that for a bit because I do want to ask you questions about that. Let's take a short break, Renu Mitzingana, uh, the Premier and I, um, and we'll be back uh, with uh, more on this conversation with uh, the SG, the suspended SG of the ANC, Ace Mahashule.